conversation with our recreation uh, manager. What type of things have, have you heard, or what have you? What are your comments on that? Well, I think you you uh, talked about space. Um, <coughs> we we don't. I mean, as I said, on the, in terms of the retail components, these are buildings. I mean, these buildings can be programmed to house a yoga shop. They can be programmed to include space like this. They can be whatever. They can be whatever. That said, there's still a land cost that we have to pay, and there's still improvement costs that have to get paid. So. I, I think in terms of collaboration, I mean, there is there is opportunity. I mean, obviously we've got a, we've got space to be planned. We talk about whether there are opportunities to uh, collaborate on developing that space jointly with, with the CSD, but there are still costs associated with building it out. So, and that has to be part of the conversation. Well, like I mentioned, I mentioned some things to, to Shane, and Shane, would you like to say a couple of things that could go on? If we had space, um, <clears throat> well, we're pretty much at capacity here. So I mean, there's a number of things we could program there if this project moves forward, um, including we talked about you know childcare options, yoga classes, you know our enrichment programming, yada yada. So I mean, depending on if this project happens um, and uh, what type of agreement we could work out, we could definitely program something like as well essentially out of space here. But my understanding is you're talking, there would have to be rent or some sort of financial agreement. There would have to be, yeah. 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 And I don't think we're asking for something special there. Yes, other, no, <laughs> what I'm asking for is being special now, not necessarily special in the future when we get money from you or, or we do subsidy. I'm asking for us to be special now in, in the plan and in the development that the space is something that we know and can to look at and use, and we pay for it if it's necessary from, well, it is necessary. from grants or from other, other ways. Okay, so I'm going to open it to yeah, I'm going to open it to questions about three or four comments, please, um, related to the CSD involvement with the project. Okay, so we'll start. Steve. <laughs> Um, yeah, I actually had some questions about um, the, the website. You had some numbers on there uh, showing your contribution, and it, I wonder if you could just clear up a few things. First of all, um, I understand that Bridge or Hoyt will re retain ownership of the market and the retail space. Is that right? Yeah. Well, the, is it going to be all Bridge? No, well, the, the Hoyts, the way that they purchase the sale agreement is, is structured. Um, we're buying a northern parcel, which is one acre. The parcel line is essentially going to be roughly, you know, roughly in this area. And then the points, and then the property line is about for the outside edge of the property ten by forty will effectively be on the outside of the side of the market. Okay. So they'll own that piece. We'll own. The okay, because in the spread spreadsheet you show uh, revenue contributions, and I believe you included Hoyt and the private business. It was pretty substantial, and I just maybe you want to comment on that. Well, the Hoyt's property will continue to generate. No, no, I know, but but the implication was this is what Bridge is is contributing to the community when in fact it's Bridge. Uh, the business and Hoyt that is making the contribution. I don't want to put words in your mouth if that's not correct. Well, I, I think if you look at the chart, you'll see that it's split out by proper, by, um, by parcel. And so, Lisa, that. is that correct? Steve, I, the, the property at the north will be owned by Bridge or by a different entity. We're developing that. We're developing the site. This whole thing is one piece of property, and this whole thing is part of a master plan that will be submitted. To but the tax contributions on the spreadsheet include other entities besides Bridge. That's I'm all I'm asking. I'm not suggesting that those, that those revenues are changing at all. I'm saying all I'm doing is reporting on the amount of revenues. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, just to make the, so it clear. Revenues are actually reflected just to make it clear. So there is there is other revenue streams coming in on that. That's fine. On the retail, right. Okay. okay. Um, I, I think the interesting thing here is we're kind of comparing apples to oranges because you asked for a report based on uh, current revenue generated versus what will be generated. And Bruce, both you and Shane just made the point that as a CSD, the services we're providing to the community, we're pretty much at capacity 
And what this project is going to do is introduce 72 new families to this eastern side. It's going to be 72 more families using the parks, 72 more families using the camps, 72 more families using the fire department, emergency calls going out, 72 more households for those kinds of things. And at the same time, we're going to be essentially reducing revenue by 50%. Her own words said that it was going to go to 8,500 for no, 15,000. You, you, no, 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 you didn't hear it correctly. There is no, there's not a reduction in revenues. In fact, there's an increase in revenues, right. but they're not, they're not huge. There, there is an increase. In so revenues. we're going to, so essentially, this plan is going to add 72 families to this eastern end, where the majority of CSD services are located, parks, parks and rec, pool, tennis courts without actually increasing the amount of revenue no, of funding. We, we will get increased revenue. From the retail, mystery retail. Let me, let me clear up something here. Retail's um, gonna be paid. I'm, I'm gonna correct something too that Lisa may not, didn't uh, look at. We currently receive approximately, from this property, $15,000 to the CSD. In a various, from the basic tax, from the fire square footage tax, from the park parcel tax, from our lights uh, uh, parcel tax. In the future, we will receive more than that $15,000 as a result of the development on the north end of the parcel, which we currently receive $378 for, okay, for that parcel. We will receive, as she mentioned, up to $8,000 or more dollars instead of the $300 we currently receive. On the other two south parcels, which they we currently receive six thousand and four four hundred dollars on those two parcels will also go up in terms of the total revenue that we get because we have a square footage tax. So anything that's built, <coughs> they pay us thirty eight cents a square uh, thirty eight cents twenty eight cents a square foot to cover the fire. So we're covered as if they increase it to five thousand people. They have to build it, and we get covered on our fire and our emergency. We, we've got that in there. So we're not losing revenue. But that's fire and emergency, but the CSD provides a number of other services that Which will be stressed. I, right. And covered by how much, just to add on to that, covered by how much, because we're not hearing numbers. And so what concerned me at one of your meetings, it seemed, what I heard in the October meeting, was it's a parcel tax, because you're exempt from these other taxes. There is a parcel tax, but the number thrown out, and correct me if I'm wrong, was 10,000 a year. I mean, I pay right around 8,000 a year for my home, and that's 10,000 a year, and that's 72 family units with children. Mm -hmm. And um, I also heard it tied into that. I've heard 1.8 children on average per household, um, 0.8 children on average per household. That 0.8 sounded a little weird to me because it seemed more like you could anticipate at least 100 extra students. So how is $10,000 going to cover, and I don't believe all of that goes to the schools, how is that going to cover the students? You know, well, I, as a bottom line, I, 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 again, I mean, Bruce, debated, how is that going to, how are the numbers adding up to the benefit of the But how is that adding up to the benefit to CSD? Okay. How is that an increase? What I'm trying to, trying to point out is that the numbers that you just said are not the numbers that, that I have in front of me or the numbers that we're anticipating. I'm okay. trying to tell you I think Lisa's numbers there, she left out one, the, the square footage tax. On the new building, she doesn't have that number in her, in her figures yet as, as to what that is. On the north end of the parcel, they will pay the 17% of the 1%, and that's going to be an additional $8,000 that we don't receive right now. We don't receive that, that, that at all, because we get $300 from that piece of parcel right now, okay? So the other two parcels, when they're built out, there will be a square footage tax associated with that, which will also bring us additional revenue. Whether or not we get the, the, the $5,000 from the uh, basic tax, we will get make that up with the square footage tax. Okay. So we're not losing revenue with this project. We are getting revenue, uh, gaining revenue uh, to, to do the project. But revenue commensurate with the number of extra families, I guess that's the bottom line well, question. Well, that's, not our, that's, that's not, not our decision. That's not our decision. It's proportionate. Um, yeah. Else? So my question, since we're keeping our comments focused on impact to CSD, and I heard from staff and, and directors an interest in collaboration, how is this added uh, level of families coming into the neighborhood and retail. 
going to impact what CSD offers and represents in the community. I know in more urban areas with housing development projects such as this, part of the plan, now I don't know how much of that is required by regulations or just part of the negotiation process, is often um, recreational space built into the project, whether it's childcare, um, whether it is a rec room, whether it is, you know, that's used for whatever, senior services, yoga classes, whatever gets decided. That is built in as part of the project. Some developments with private developers, um, which may be different in this case, um, there is a school impact requirement. Um, I think a lot of us are very concerned, and that's a different set of hearings and meetings, about the school impact. But just talking about from a CSD perspective, we're hearing um, we have no plan financially for the future for building out continuing services at the level they are um, for a larger community than we already have. So you're building this out in our community, what's your response to that? Retail isn't it. Starbucks is not what we're talking about. We're talking about a very vibrant, right. involved community, a community center that has um, <coughs> is busting to capacity, that people are coming from San Francisco to go to our pool. You know, what's your contribution to the community built into this? project. Because right now, I hear retail, which is going to pay a fat tax, and families who are going to enjoy this great community. Well, I think, you know, I, I want to wrap this up. I, I think a lot of the comments that I'm hearing are similar to what happened. We had two, community, two large community meetings where we did have exhaustive conversations about these questions. And in terms of the basic property tax question, I, we haven't dodge that issue. I mean, we're not, we're, we are exempt from the basic property tax. We will pay all of the legislative, all of the CSD charges that are applicable, regardless of whether this was market rate. The, all of these fees would be paid by a market, I mean, they're based on square footage, so we're paying the square footage tax. We're compensate. We're, we're providing what we're required to provide to the CSD in terms of revenue. In terms of just on-site space, I mean, we are an affordable housing developer. We, we build, we build uh, our developments, we have we have common area. We actually have a, this project will have a community room, which actually sort of identified here, and management offices. Mm -hmm. And we will have a play area. We actually kind of a play area, plan of community gardens within the site. I mean, we will provide recreational space on site. Um, I, is it limited to the residents of this? Community or is this? It, it needs to be because of the because of the funding it's, uh, and also because of the liability issues around allowing okay. people to come on site. I mean, we. Yeah. Um, one more comment from the, the public, and then we're going to go to the to the board and staff that has a couple questions. So, anybody have a real burning issue? Keep your hand up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And somebody that I haven't heard from. Yeah, maybe in the second row. Well, since you guys had funded the guiding principles for the Marinwood Village, I just wanted to know why we aren't following the guiding principles. And some of the questions that I have are on, it says um, there will be 90 to 100 residential units with 20 to 50 of them affordable. The rest are, at least 50 of them are supposed to be at market rate. Um, answer the retail. 4,000 to 12,000 square feet. It says the project will include 12,000 square feet of ancillary retail space. Um, it's very clear that there's market rate um, and inclusionary housing units. Um, <coughs> there's a possibility of housing units being sold. Um, I know that there's been other meetings. We've talked about um, senior housing and other types of housing. And so um, I'm wondering first why you're not following these guiding principles and why there is no advisory committee set up to date already, as it mentions in here, to be reviewing these. Um, and if you had any change since your last presentation in the um, number of units that are being provided for seniors versus the number of units for housing. For the, 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 the development proposal is similar to what was presented. Bridge is a nonprofit developer. We build affordable housing. 
The county has identified the site as an affordable housing site. There's a, a, a tremendous need for affordable housing in Marin County. Other developers that have had this, this site under, under site control were profit for motivated companies. They wanted to, to build market rate housing. We have a mission to build affordable housing, and it's consistent with what's it's consistent with the county's objectives around the site. It's not consistent. Okay. With the I mean, I'm, I'm going to answer your question. I'm going to let Bill answer. I just want to make one comment on on that document. That advisory committee was formed. That advisory committee did continue to go and work with the next two developers, and then when the market and everything went down in 2008, it went away. Well, and they've met with it a, a number of times too since. Then. Yeah. So I was I was on the committee for a good portion of the time, and and then personally spent time with uh, one of the developers. I, I actually logged um, total volunteer time. Well, I was all volunteer time, but 500 hours um, specifically um, that I recorded, and that all ended um, I think in 2008 or so. And I kind of have other than going to think, one of the meetings. Um, that, so just for. Um, uh, and I, I appreciate the presentation, and I know what the, the mission of Ridge is, and, I, and we, I think we all have to recognize that what they do is, you know, is essential to our community. And what we're talking about is this specific project, but I appreciate, you know, Lisa, the, you know what you guys do. And I also, I'm on the board of the food bank, so I, I really believe in being able to have people afford a place to live and be able to eat, you know, too. So having said that, um, I, I, I will say specifically to, to your time here, um, I do agree with you that my, what I don't like about the story that's, that I, I keep on hearing repeated as part of the presentations is that, uh, and I'm not saying you're doing it specifically, but I hear that there, it's a continuation of the guiding principles. And I personally disagree with that because, because I believe that the guiding principles did include and were stated at that time. And if you look even on the website, it conveniently drops out the language of it being, uh, uh, you know, 100 houses, but 20%. Uh, and what I would call it, my time was it was 20% mandatory, and the county was going to try to find an additional 30%, 50% maximum affordable. Um, and so I would like the, the story, uh, as it moves forward, to recognize what those guiding principles originally were, and to acknowledge that this is there was a, there's a difference in people that have been involved to a degree, not entirely, but there are a lot of people that spent time initially that haven't been included, uh, not not haven't been invited, but haven't been part of this process, and that this is a different project. And to me, it's it's operating under a different set of conditions, and it's a different plan. And I just want that to be acknowledged and and not not passed over. Um, and then in terms of the community, I'd say you know as we uh, in terms of uh, impact on the district. Uh, I mean, this is a cautionary tale, and it's still in, in, in you know, in action because we were presented, we, uh, in these meetings with these former uh, dialogues and developers were presented with, an, a, originally it was a discussion about 125 and 150, and then it got down to 100, and we had a Board of Supervisors meeting where it was 100, you know, units, and people yelled and screamed about 100 units, uh, to, you know, uh, 80 being uh, way affordable and 20 being, uh, I'm sorry, 20 being affordable and 80 being uh, potentially uh, revenue generating. Um, and you know, here, and, and so we got down to this agreement about 70. And having been someone who sat on, the, on both sides of the table and was with the developer and saw some of the number crunching and saw how that didn't financially work with uh, the residential developers, it just wasn't there. They were going to take their, their, their you know, uh, profit seeking somewhere else. So we didn't get that. And for those of us who uh, you know are happy with the site as it is, that I can't really address that. But what I can say is that instead of having the 100 units with 80 of them being generating revenue, we're being presented with an idea to have 70 that generate no revenue. And so we've we've you know we've essentially you know we don't have 30 families there or 30 build you know portions of the building there, but we have zero <laughs> relatively revenue. We have some increase, but we have nothing close to what we would have had. So I I you know again nothing to do with with bridge, but I want that to be recognize as part of the story. I want the community to know this. Th in, when we go and talk about our budget for the future, these are the types of things. We have to look at the whole picture. <coughs> you can't sort of say no, 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 and then end up with something else that gets you so much less than you might have had had you just said, you know what, 100's not bad. We've got 2,500 houses here. You know, Is another 100 going to be that bad? Um, and uh, finally, uh, to, the, to the recognition of the uh, uh, issue with the record department, one one correct figure, and let's try to stick with you know correct factual information. Our, our rec programs are uh, first of all our, our our rec department generates revenue for us, and people pay for those programs. So while it is true that we would be uh, in any plan, doesn't matter if it's this one or another one or whatever, 
uh, we would be the district would be burdened with some uh, you know additional expense. We'd also be uh, take it, have advantage of additional revenue for people paying for extra pool memberships, for paying for classes, for paying for those things. So let's look at both sides of that. And I'm just asking that as we go through, be involved in the process. But let's really comprehensively look at these issues and not make you know not get behind you know short-sighted decisions. Um, Tom, I, I just wanted to point out that there is a point in the process with the in CEQA and the uh, your application where the impacts on the, the district and the community and on our specific CSD functions will be identified, quantified, and uh, and responded to. Uh, is that, that's correct. And that's through CEQA. So as the fire chief will be asked to review the plans and you will have his comments. Uh, if there are impacts on recreation, then there is that time for that to take place, and, and that's through the CEQA process? It's, or? it would be through, yeah, it would be through the CEQA process. Okay. And how far away are, is that, do you think? Well, the process itself is a long process. Can be right, right, but the, the first round of, uh, the first, or scoping. Yeah, uh, scoping. Scoping. And, uh, you know, would we be asked to comment uh, in the scoping? There would be a public and, scoping and session. That's okay. Part, that's part of the so if, if we felt that their recreation needed to be looked at, there would be plenty of opportunity. So yeah, that's right. Cool, yes. So if, if it goes, yeah, I would go to that deck, then there's less opportunity. If it goes to that deck, then it's a different and, process. Yeah. And I had one other question. Are these all um, all rental, or is there a co uh, condominium plus rental? They're rental. They're rental. It's 100% rental. Okay. Karen? Okay. Um, Two questions and one comment. Uh, my questions for you are, aren't seniors allowed into bridge housing if their income qualify? I should have pointed that out. So yeah, I mean, if, if these they're are not excluded. excluded. They're not excluded. So actually, uh, one of the things about our housing, and particularly in Moran, is that a lot of our one bedroom units are occupied by seniors. We have a, we, they really are overly rep, over-represented relative to the balance of our of our property portfolio in Marin County. So yes, this project has a number of one bedroom units and this will likely be How many? How many one bedroom units? You know, what's the breakdown? It's roughly it's 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 roughly um, thirty it's we haven't completely said it it would depend in part on the financing sources because it that drives a lot of these decisions. But but let's say roughly thirty percent ones, um, forty percent forty percent twos and thirty percent threes. My second question is, I'm, I should be clear, and I'm not, on the difference between low income housing and affordable housing. Uh, my specific question is, does this plan include a section eight units? We, we, um, we are, this is an affordable residential unit. These are, these are tax credit finance units, and, um, the, the way that the program works is essentially it writes down the cost of the development so that when you borrow money, you <coughs> borrow less, therefore you have less debt service, and you then have to, you can't, you charge less as a result of those subsidies. So the rents here are, are, are determined by the tax credit program, and people pay, they, they don't pay, it's not a section. There might be a section of voucher holders here, because we're not able, we, we can't discriminate if somebody has right. a section of voucher and they meet our requirements. But these folks play, will pay a fixed rent based on affordability, based on a uh, range of affordability levels. Okay, great. And that answers my two questions. Beautiful. Thank you. My, my comment is, as far as concerns about fiscal impact on the district of the burden outweighing the new revenue, the only difference that in, in finance to the district of your homes tax assessments and these homes tax assessments is the 17 hundredths of a penny per dollar of value. 17 hundredths of a penny per dollar of value that you guys pay that we get will be excluded from this. Everything else that we get that supports the district <coughs> and our other services through different tax measures other than the basic 1% tax will still be collected from these units. So the fiscal impact, the difference of fiscal impact between our homes and these units is actually very small. Thank you.
For the CSD. To, to the CSD. So yeah. I, I know there are more <coughs> questions. You've got your, you've raised your hand a, a couple of times. And I stated up front, this is a business meeting. We've got business that we need to get accomplished tonight. We need to, yeah, we are running late. Lisa um, graciously agreed to come, make the presentation, talk about the finances, talk about the collaboration. I, I think in terms of an item on the agenda that, that it says give direction to the to the staff, I think the only direction is staff be aware and work with Lisa for some possibilities and work on those possibilities for it. I would yes, I think the board has to have that discussion too because thank you for leading it, but we, we haven't the rest of us haven't been part of the well, discussion. He needs to come with us and, and say that, but he needs to find out what the possibilities are. Okay. The, um, and, and with that, again, thank you, Lisa, for coming in Bridge Housing. And again, if your questions weren't answered, I'm sorry. Lisa has said there will be many more opportunities.